All right, how I started. Uh, I think um, it was a very bold step. It was a very, very bold decision. I took um, a leap of faith. I, obviously, my entrance into entrepreneurship wasn't uh, a regular story. Um, I was born out of um, necessity. Um, it was very traditional to go to school, acquire a degree, and then get a job, all right? So my case was different because I couldn't find the kind of job I wanted. Uh, so I ended up spending two years at home as a, a jobless young man. <laughs> and so it was very, very natural for me to start something on my own. So it was just a way of trying to keep myself busy. And I said to myself, you know what? You need to uh, do something on your own. You need to just keep yourself busy. And I remember that um, while I was growing up, my parents never, uh, my parents worked. My dad used to work with the company. My mom did the same. So there was no entrepreneurial background. Uh, I had no idea about what entrepreneurship meant. But I remember clearly when I was at NYC camp, a guy came to talk about entrepreneurship. That was one of the seminars we had at um, NYC camp, 1994 or thereabout. And the guy said that entrepreneurship is about uh, identifying a need in the society and uh, filling that gap. So I remember that clearly and I said to myself, why don't you just do something within your field? And why don't you just create a value within your field? And you know, I studied electrical electronics engineering and so it was normal to do something within that uh, field. That time, computer engineering was not very popular, but so many people were actually acquiring computers. Computer was a little bit new, and so many people were excited buying computers. And every time they had problems with their computers, it was always very, very expensive uh, to, to, to maintain or to fix. So I said to myself, why don't you go and learn computer engineering? Forget about this, your degree. You know, go and learn computer engineering. So I decided to work as an apprentice with a friend who had a computer engineering outfit for six months. And so I acquired that expertise. And that has really helped me to, to you know, that has really helped me to become uh, um, a computer engineer. So I acquired the expertise. I started working as a computer engineer with my friend for a few months, and then I started mine. So I knew that there was a gap, and I knew how to fill that gap. So that was what I did. So my story was born out of necessity. And what I did was to acquire the right competence to fill a gap. All right, so I became a very good computer engineer, and that was how I started. So competence, uh, um, integrity, and ability to create value were my keywords, and those were the things that helped me to sell myself. And I became a very good computer engineer, and I started making money for myself. I got myself a space, office space, and that was how I started. So that's my story, my entrepreneurial story. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But the point is, you have to start from a point. First of all, uh, entrepreneurship is all about identifying needs. It's about adapting. Understand their behavior, knowing what they want, what they can afford to pay for. That's what entrepreneurship is about. So you need to know the people, know what they want and what they can afford to pay. In my case, I started as a computer engineer. But you see, time things changes as time evolved. I became a businessman, right? But that wasn't possible uh, without training. So I actually acquired a lot of training. Uh, one of the things I did was also to attend the uh, um, Lagos Business School MBA program. So I acquired my MBA from Lagos Business School. That helped me to acquire managerial skill, all right? And later on, organizational skill. So I was able to uh, manage my little company. I grew the company to a point where I started hiring more qualified people that could actually help me manage the system. All right, so it's about uh, starting from a point, identifying needs, uh, getting the right people, um, having a vision, knowing what you want, having a business plan, and then running in that direction. If you don't have a vision and you're just running, then of course you'll be confused. So mine was very clear. At the point, I, I was able to uh, come up with a, a development plan. I had a vision. And then I needed to get the right people to fill that gap or to join me in pursuing that vision. And so we had people whose vision or whose value aligned with ours. 
and that helps us to you know run with the vision so today we have people who have been with us for like 15 years 16 years and slot is just 20 years okay we're going to be 20 by december so we have people who are uh, whose values align with ours and that's the reason why we can actually work together so uh, from the point of identifying the need from the point of setting up a business from the point of uh, uh, Coming up with techno brand it was all about identifying needs. It was all about getting the right people. It was all about solving problems. It was all about um, knowing what the consumers can afford, right? And producing such products and services to meet their needs. So I, I think it's a part of entrepreneurial lifestyle. Uh, a typical entrepreneur must uh, be courageous, right? Uh, and uh, trust me, challenge is actually one of the things that makes you an entrepreneur. So you don't run away from challenges, you run into challenges because such opportunities sometimes gives you uh, ability to create wealth and create uh, value. Um, challenges, one of the challenges I think uh, I faced and I, and I think that's very popular and very common is funding, right? Um, finance, startup and also um, finance to expand, finance to um, acquire and all that. So cost of finance is very high in Nigeria and sometimes it's very, very difficult to get money. But I think the best way to get finance or to acquire um, uh, products or, or whatever you need to grow your business is to be able to uh, show competence. When you can, when you, if you can demonstrate that you have competence and that you have integrity, people will trust you. All right, they'll trust you with their money they will trust you with uh, anything you need, okay? So for me, my calculation is, or my equation is basically saying competence plus integrity, all right, is a cost of value. And when you create value, you will enjoy a relationship. So you can get money from your family members, you can get money from your friends, and you can also find angels who can <laughs> give you money too. To grow your business. So the most important thing is people are looking for men and women who uh, can demonstrate competence, people who can demonstrate integrity. All right. So once you have this, of course, the money will come because you need three basic things to actually create wealth. You need capability, which is competence, like I said. You need strategy, which is something different, and then you need capital. So capital is actually the last. So you need to actually demonstrate competence first, all right? And so if you can do that and you can show that, look, you have something different from the regular uh, uh, things that people find, that you have reasons to demonstrate or to convince people why they should buy what you're selling or buy your service, people will obviously want to support you. And that's what I've seen. So I'm a product of wonderful relationship, all right? People uh, from, from onset, people were able to trust me and they were able to allow me to have access to their resources or support my business. And that has actually helped me. So particularly in Nigeria, where integrity is a very scarce commodity, all right? If you want to call it a commodity anyway, all right? Uh, if you have that, of course, you will enjoy relationship and you will enjoy support. So finance for me is one. Then two, uh, getting quality people. Getting people who can align with your value who can align with your vision is also a big challenge. Most times people want to work with you just to make money and run away. So if you have a vision and you don't find men and women who can support your, 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 your dream and work with you, you might have you might struggle. So the best thing to do is try to be very careful to get people who have soft skill, all right? People who are passionate, uh, people who like what you're doing, not necessarily family members, or not necessarily people who just want to work because they want to make money. So, you should be able to communicate your, your vision with them. Of course, your vision must be inspirational. And when they, once they like your vision and they align with that vision, you can actually have their support. That's one thing that I think most people should look at for. So uh, finance, people. And then three, adaptability. All right, most people don't understand the uh, business world. I mean, the business landscape, particularly in Nigeria. All right, people want to copy what they what they learned from somewhere else or what they copied from somewhere else. Something could be doing very well in Ghana, as close as Ghana is, but it might not do well in Nigeria. So you need to understand the people, understand their behavior, understand their purchasing power for you to actually sell products and services to them. So if I wake up now and I say, oh, I have so much money to play with, 
and I go to Agege and set up a five-star uh, five hotel in Agege. That's a beautiful hotel, quality-wise and everything. All right? So, but are you creating value? That's the question. No, you're rather destroying value. Because people in that environment cannot patronize such a beautiful, quality, and wonderful hotel. I, I think the uh, traditional system right now is that uh, you are you are being prepared to work in, in organizations. Uh, that's very traditional. Uh, I think universities should actually change this paradigm. There should be a paradigm shift. Uh, people should be trained to become entrepreneurs. They should be trained to become self-employed. Uh, it's it's, it's uh, something that worries me a lot. Most times, people go to school, and when they get out of school, they're not even employable. And that's very serious. So I'm not talking about self-employment right now. They're not even employable. So you still have to go tr get them trained and all that. So university should be focusing more on allowing the students to contribute to the training program, not the other way around, where the lecturer comes in and he you know, downloads everything, and then the students copy and then try to write. So the students should be involved, all right? So more of assignment that will get the kids involved. Uh, and then the university should promote critical thinking and problem-solving skills. There's need for kids to learn how to apply what they've learned, not necessarily uh, asking them to define something when they're writing exams. Define this, you know, explain this. No, it should be more of application, all right? So they should develop critical thinking skills, problem-solving skills, and then Ability to imagine is also very important. I don't know how you're going to teach that, but it's very, very important. Uh, if you don't set a vision for yourself, of course, you don't know what direction to take. So I believe that every child should, first of all, uh, be taught entrepreneurship in the light of, you know what? You are not just born to exist. You are born to create value. Society needs you, all right? So you should be a wealth creator. All right. Our problem is inflation problem, joblessness and all that. But if you have your own business, you can employ people. If you have your own business, you can create words. All right. So word creation is everybody's business. So if they have such mindset, then they will begin to think as you know, like an entrepreneur. So apart from critical thinking and problem solving skills, they need to understand that creativity is the only way to create wealth. Creativity is not something people claim to be inborn. It's not. You can learn to be creative, right? Anybody can be creative. There are two components to creativity. One is ability to look at the problem in order to prefer a solution. The other one is you looking at the problem, looking at the solution, and trying to identify a problem <laughs> within the solution. One is reasonable. The other one is not reasonable. All right. Now, the reasonable one is you look at a situation and say, oh, this is wrong, that is, that is not wrong, that is not right, and then let's do something. Many a time, we don't look at things from that point of view. So if we have such mindset, then we should be able to look at how to solve problems or how to, make, how to modify what we have. So many people we know today, like the Steve Jobs of this world, were not creative people. They learned creativity. Yes, the land creativity. So there are three ways to win. Uh, one is innovation, two is strategy, three is luck. About 20-30% of entrepreneurs today are winning or succeeding because of luck. Why? What do I mean by luck? One, their connection with government, the influence of parents or family members. But the core way, the main way or the main uh, uh, clear way to, to win is by being innovative. That's creativity. And so creativity also helps you to come up with the right strategy. So you can't win if you don't have a strategy. You can't win if you are not creative. And so creativity should be uh, a skill or the kind of skill that people should acquire, all right, if they are actually coming out to face the competitive world. All right, so you need creativity. And like I said, um, you need uh, critical thinking uh, mind, and, and, then so, and then problem solving skill. Uh, you, need, um, you need, apart from uh, critical thinking skill, uh, problem solving skill, uh, creativity, you also need to adapt 
things to the needs or the um, to the lifestyle of, of the consumers. Let, let, let me make that clearer. For example, a typical product can be fast selling in America, for example, in Europe, in, in UK, uh, and, and then even in South Africa. But you'll be surprised that such products might not even sell in Nigeria. Today, you might not like it, but that's the truth. The online store or the online business is not as <laughs> fast as it should be. You know, trained and ordered. We are not there yet. Why is it so? Because a typical Nigerian still wants to feel the products, still wants to see, all right, before he pays for. We will get there, but it's a gradual thing. So the, the culture, right, or, or the cultural angle is also very important. So I, I believe uh, kids should learn how to um, adapt products, adapt services to the Nigerian way. So that's also very important. So adapting products, ability to adapt products, adopt and adapt, you know, that's also very, very important. Uh, what other skill? I also think it's very important for the, for the kids to also know that um, uh, the street experience is also very good. Um, most times, most of the, the kind of dishes they get are basically about uh, Mac of uh, Facebook, Steve Jobs of Apple. But I think it's also very good to localize these concepts, all right? So the teaching should be more of local and the people should actually acquire local, you know, um, um, local styles and local concepts that might not be defined, might not actually have names, but there are local ways to, to actually solve problems, uh, local ways to actually um, uh, play in, in this uh, world of, of entrepreneurship. Uh, I think Nigeria is a, is a fallow ground. What I mean by fallow ground is, um, is a place where so many things are not structured. And so you might not be able to really come in and apply policies, apply concepts, and, and, and then uh, expect to get results. So you are expected to also learn, um, learn the rule of the game, all right? The rule of the game is um, try to see what we're doing, try to see what we have on ground. And if you understand that, then you can actually begin to model yours all right, you begin to perfect it, you begin to modify it. And most of the things I've, I've, I've read or I studied from Lagos Business School, also, um, I'm also an alumnus of Harvard Business School. So most of the things I've seen uh, in terms of how things should be done are not the things I'm seeing here, all right? So I'm, I'm, I'm in between the Harvard business concept and then the local Nigeria way of, of, of delivery. So I, I, I need to know how to blend both, all right? Because if you don't understand how to blend these concepts, of course, you will just be uh, destroying value. So entrepreneurship is about creating value, not destroying value. It's either you're creating value or you're destroying value. So, it's, so you deliver value to the consumer and then you capture value for yourself. And that's what business is all about. All right, so exchange of value. So at every point in time, we should be able to localize our concepts. That's the skill. All right, ability to localize concept, <laughs> ability to localize the international uh, 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 practice and all that. So this is what happens in America, and this is doing very well in America. But can this work here in Nigeria? So you should be able to adapt and adapt. Right, that's a skill. And I think uh, uh, maybe in course of teaching, people can actually acquire that, and they also need to know that look, the Nigerian business world is not the basic. Uh, it's not the regular uh, business world, all right? Uh, it's a little bit tough here, uh, but whatever you know is just basic. So you need to actually experience the routine when you get out of this place. And I think it's a wonderful thing, the fact that you're not bringing seasoned entrepreneurs to come in and, and meet with these kids and share ideas, share experiences with them, and let them know what is actually uh, the real entrepreneurship, and not necessarily what uh, Mark Zuckerberg is doing or what Steve Jobs did, <laughs> right? And not what Microsoft, you know, did. The environment is different. And then also, most importantly, is the, the uh, access to information and technology. All right, that's a wonderful skill because the business environment, the, the, the uh, industry is expanding. It's no longer uh, a resource-based economy. It's now a knowledge-based economy, all right? So, the goalpost is shifting, the cheese is moving, all right? So uh, 
So students should understand that IT is a, a new way to um, solve problems, is a new way to create value, is a is more um, easier way to assess people, um, create efficiency, uh, and do much more than the regular industry. So I, I believe the knowledge-based economy is, is, an, is an economy that is actually providing opportunities for young people. So they should have such skills too, IT and technology. Information on technology. Thank you.